Good morning, Titans. It's Friday, November 7th, and you're watching Titan TV. I'm Menji Wesu. And I'm Jennifer Goon. On Tuesday, November the 4th, the Centennial Choir performed at their annual Java Night concert. Vibe had a special performance for this event. Abby and Caitlin have the story. Since the beginning of the school year, choir students have been hard at work preparing for their annual Java Night. Let's take a look at how these students did and how they felt about their performances. So we started the year by working on Java Night songs and their pop songs and their choral songs. So it's kind of a mix of stuff that people know and don't know. And we, we have a lot of fun. It's my favorite concert of the year because of all the solos. And it's really amazing because we have solos in our choral songs and pop songs. It really shows off our instrumentalists too. Like we have a bunch of people that are playing guitar for other people singing. It's just really fun. And I think it's a great way to fundraise for this place. And I think everybody really enjoys it because it's really chill, like coffee house feel. During Java night, guests could enjoy drinks and desserts from Tiff's Treats, Great American Cookies, Starbucks, and more. Great job tonight, Titans. This is Abby O'Brien, Titan TV. On Saturday, November 1st, Centennial's hostess slipped on their running shoes and walked with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in their Light the Night walk to raise money for cancer research. Together, the Frisco ISD HOSA teams raised over $400 for the American Cancer Society. Way to go, HOSA. Titan Time began a new unit in their discussions called Academic Ethics. They should investigate further. We see our friends and acquaintances crossing this line every day, but choose to stay behind the wall of tattletaling. We asked Ms. Mayfies for a more detailed look at what academic ethics really is for the present day and your future. Academic ethics means you taking ownership of your own learning um, and choosing your integrity and your character and doing what's right over choosing to give in to the pressure from your friends or your classmates or whoever is asking you to cheat or plagiarize or share answers. Um, academic ethics is doing what's right despite that pressure. The kid literally lifted up the girl's cover sheet to look at her paper during the test. And the girl said something about it so she didn't get in trouble because she didn't want him to. She's trying to get him to stop, but he got in trouble. The main point that we're trying to get across is learning for the sake of learning and knowledge, not for that outcome of the end grade. Um, our students know right from wrong. They know what cheating is. They know that they're not supposed to do it. We are hoping that um, raising awareness and talking about the topic will help them um, find that inner strength and that personal strength um, to say, you know what, I'm going to do what's right, even though I'm getting um, pressure from someone else to do what's wrong. This topic is important because the whole point of high school is to prepare you for what's after high school, whether that's a college or job or a relationship. Um, and not acting with integrity or not doing the right thing is a lot more expensive outside of high school in that you could get kicked out of college, you could lose a job and get fired, you could ruin a relationship. Um, we want our students to learn these lessons here at the high school level um, where the consequence is heavy, but it's much smaller than your career, your college education, your relationships. The consequence for cheating at Centennial High School the first time is a day of in-school suspension and a zero on that assignment. Even if it's a quiz or a test or a major grade, um, it is a zero and it is not retestable. 
I think that sometimes students cheat because they feel pressure from either their parents or a coach or a teacher to get the grade and they forget that the grade is not what's most important. The knowledge and the experience and the learning and the growing your brain is, is more important than just getting that end grade. Um, I also think that that focus is short-sighted. It's, I have to have that grade by Friday or for eligibility. That's, that's very small picture as compared to, I need this knowledge for the next level, whether it's the next level of math, whether it's the next level of going to college, you need that knowledge and that foundation and that basis. So doing something just for the grade is very small picture, short-sighted. It doesn't work long-term. With advances in technology and software, video making has become more accessible to all of us. One student's love for her craft not only earned her a great scholarship, but has exposed her talents to those who may help her get her career off the ground. Hi, I'm Mary Martha Darden, and I have a passion for filmmaking. It took me a while to realize that I wanted to pursue film as a, like, um, as a career, and it wasn't just my hobby. Um, I know that through middle school and High, half of high school I was doing volleyball and I thought you know volleyball I can go far in life at that but once I realized that sports wasn't wasn't for me anymore I had to give that up and I took that risk to pursue my passion. My video I Learned a Dream was for a film contest that was done by Frisco Education Foundation and Viral Run. You had five days to make a narrative or a documentary over Frisco and the positive influence it had on you. And I chose narrative because I thought it would be more impactful to just to make a video that shared my words and it wasn't someone else's words. Um, Cause I've lived here my whole life and I grew up here. And my idea for the video was to show what Frisco has offered through these years. And when I started planning it, um, you know, we, we, we kind of are ungrateful at times for what Frisco offers because I, even when I started planning it, I was like, what does Frisco offer? Like, okay, school, sports. But I'm like, if you dig deeper into it, Frisco has grown as, as we have grown up, um, especially for me. Um, I watched my brother go to one high school. Um, there, or I watched my brother grow up when there was one high school. And um, by the time I got to elementary school, middle middle school, and high school, there was it was building and it kept on building and it's still building as I'm growing older. And I think that was the idea about the video, as um, Frisco was building, they were accomplishing their dreams, and it taught me to go after my dreams as I'm growing and building too. Dr. Oklinski has his own Halloween tradition that deals with explosives. Allie has more. For Halloween, people traditionally paint or carve pumpkins with a knife, but Dr. A carves it with a knife and chemically pops out the face of his pumpkin. You will need a carved pumpkin, calcium carbide, water, lighter, and a cup. Put calcium carbide in a cup of water and wait a couple seconds and then light it. This is Allie Bockler with Titan TV. No Shame November started off as a unique way to raise awareness for cancer, and now it is a major trend. The goal is for people to embrace their hair, which many cancer patients lose, and let your hair grow. Some Titans are participating, and we will show you the aftershots at the end of the month. The American Cancer Society uses the donations for research and to provide free information and services for cancer patients. In its first two years, No Shade November raised more than $175,000 for the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Starting in 2003, No Shade November raised funds and awareness for prostate cancer. Each day, 660 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer. An American man dies from prostate cancer every 15 minutes. 21 countries participated in the year 2012, and a total of 1.1 million people participated. This is Muthuvira Marai Malay, Titan TV. The Frisco Parade is coming up. Brandon talks to some of the participants. On Saturday, November 8th, the football team, band members, color guard, drill team, and cheerleaders will be attending the Frisco Community Parade. The parade will start at 10 a.m. Be there or be square. We talked to a couple of students about their part in the Frisco tradition. Uh, my part in the uh, parade is we uh, march down uh, Main Street and we uh, follow the football team and the Sweethearts as we uh, play the fight song and uh, Stars and Stripes and uh, we just try and go represent Centennial with a good name.
Uh, my part in the parade is I'm going to be on the Homecoming King and Queen float because I won Homecoming King. The Sweethearts are going to be marching and doing stand routine. For a sports update this week, here's Alyssa. Hey Titans, I'm Alyssa Harmon with your Titan TV sports updates. Our Lady Titan volleyball team caged the Colony Cougars 3-0 on Tuesday. Last Friday they played the Frisco Raccoons winning 3-2. The junior varsity football team had a close game against the Lobos losing 12-14. On Thursday, th October 30th, the varsity football team whipped the Little Elm Lobos 31-0. to Don't forget to come support your Titans as they play the Colony at Colony High School. For cross country, A.J. Sims represented Centennial at the Region 2 cross country meet on Saturday. A.J. placed 57th out of 186 runners and his time was 17-17. Basketball season is starting this month. The varsity girls team had their first scrimmage game on Tuesday against Duncan Geyer, but lost by three points. The boys JV and varsity teams will play scrimmages on November 10th against Denton Geyer, Highland Park, and Saxe on the Centennial High School courts. Do you like to compete? There are ways to participate in UIL competitions even if you don't belong to a sports team. Kayla has more. When people say UIL competition, our minds automatically go to team sports like football, tennis, and marching band. However, there are dozens of UIL teams you can join and compete for your school without joining a sport. I spoke to participants of some of these lesser known UIL teams for more information about why you should consider joining. The benefits I get from being on the UIL social studies team is that the theme this year is 1920, the year of six presidents, and I'm an A-push too, so it, the to correlate together so it really helps me out in my other history class and the best part of that is Mrs. Rosenfeld is our teacher and she is phenomenal and I get to hang out with her and as lame as that sounds that is actually really fun. The great parts about being on a UIL academic team is that you get to choose what you're studying as opposed to like when you go to class your teacher gets to choose what you're studying. When you choose a team you get to choose what you do and when you do it it's super independent and it's nice to have that ability to teach yourself every once in a while. If you want more information on these teams or how you can join, talk to Tammy Turner in the library. This is Kayla McCullough with Titan TV. That's it for this week, Titans. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Andrew. Have a great weekend.